Hey, hey, today's lesson is all about exclusionary language, racially exclusionary language, particularly in the coaching industry. So if you are a coach and you support clients in a coaching container, listen up. There are some four phrases that I want to share with you that you have potentially used uh, unintentionally thinking that uh, these are good, they're supportive and you're trying to illustrate something or support your clients and um, whilst they may work for some people, they will not work for all people, particularly people of colour. So the first one that I want to share is um, the term be the hero and not the victim and this has very much stemmed from the idea of um, marketing, the story brand narrative where you are the guide and you're guiding the person, the, the person you're supporting, um, you know, they're the hero and you're guiding them to whatever it is that they need. You're uh, helping them with what they're struggling with, with their problem. The, the issue here, and whilst this narrative is powerful, it's great and it's worked for many different businesses, is by looking at things from that perspective of, you know, the guide and the hero, what is missing from this story or rather what needs to be taken into consideration is the systems that exist that are exclusionary, the systems that exist that elevate one group over the other. So there are systems in place where, particularly when it comes to people of color, when they've been excluded and marginalized and they're underrepresented and they are victims, it's not by choice and it's not something that they can wish away. It's how the system has been set up. The system has been set up without them in mind. And so when you go and tell your coaching client, I want you to think of yourself as the hero and not the victim. Whilst they might go ahead and manifest this and think of themselves as a hero, there are barriers that have been put in place to keep them in a certain position and those are things that we may not have the ability to unshackle ourselves from but as a space holder as a coach this is something to be aware of so you're not perpetuating um, harm as you're trying to support them the other phrase that i often hear that um, comes from a good place and it's great when it when it's coming from a place of affirming, you know, you're trying to affirm something, particularly when it comes to money. And this phrase is, money comes easily to me. It's very much centered and comes from a place of privilege. And we all have different types of privileges, some more than others, but there's a level of privilege that a lot of people have. And whilst it's a good mantra to have money comes easily to me, it doesn't for all people, particularly people of color. When you think of what um, the cost of their skin color, um, when it comes to promotions in the workplace, when it comes to climbing up the corporate ladder, when it comes to the business context, when it comes to building trust with people of color, selling a product, you know, buying a service from them, there's so much that goes into play when there's the trust factor and the issue of being somebody who comes from a race that is marginalized, a race that is excluded, a race that is oppressed. And whilst it's great to chant, you know, money comes easily for me, not necessarily for those particular groups of people. They have to work extremely hard. They have to do more than other groups of people in other races in order to just maybe make ends meet, just to keep the doors of their business open. And so as a coach who is supporting somebody who is building a business, trying to get a promotion or really just grow, um, uh, personally or within a money mindset, be mindful of using the phrase of money comes easily to me. The third one is, um, and this particular phrase 
I have seen and hear when it comes to the online space and launching. You know, I'm no longer chained to my nine to five job. Uh, the connotation here is being chained, that you do, it comes from a place of, I didn't have a choice. I was chained to my desk. I was chained to my job. And that stems from um, language linked to slavery. You know, and, and when we link that to slavery, slavery, as we know, of course, it's not a choice. It is a system of um, keeping a certain group of people in a certain way where they are told what to do and they have no freedom. There is no freedom. And whilst you think about a corporate job and whilst you might be, you know, very much restricted and by your desk a lot to get your work done, you have the choice of leaving that job. And whilst that might come at a cost to you based on your livelihood and making ends meet, it is not something that you are being forced to do. So that is language that you just need to be so mindful when you are launching, when you're promoting something and you want to use words that are kind of, you know, get people engaged or, yeah, I feel like I'm chained to my desk or to my job. Use language that will not um, impact people who come from racially diverse backgrounds in a negative way. And the fourth one, ooh, this one, um, th there's a different way to, to explain this, but this one is, I'm not qualified to talk about race. And this has its merits in that, yes, we do, um, a lot of educators uh, tell people, uh, white people, hey, you're not qualified to talk about that, or your point of view is um, misleading, or um, this is a good time for you to be quiet and to listen rather than to contribute. And there is a room for that. But I often see this being used in instances where there is an opportunity for you to share your perspective. There's an opportunity for you to amplify the things that you believe in and be in support of racial equity work, but it's dismissing it and saying, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not qualified to talk to it. If we're talking about matters of race, I think it's important that we are all contributing to this conversation because it's not just work that black, brown, indigenous and people of color need to do. This is work that we all need to do and we need to do it collectively as a group. And whilst there are areas where you may not be uh, qualified to speak to, your perspective, your beliefs, the things that you support and stand for, your values, it is important to articulate that. And so when you say, I'm not qualified to speak on matters of race and bringing it back to the context of coaching, bringing it back to your coaching container, and perhaps somebody asks you that and you respond in that way, how that makes others who are people of color feel in that container is something to take into consideration. How the, the message it also sends to others who may not be people of color is also something to take into consideration because as a space holder, as a coach, you are in a leadership position. And that is why it's so important to be trauma informed and trauma aware and to be in a position where you are exercising and looking at things through a racially inclusive lens. When you do that as a space holder, when you do that as a coach, you will be giving an experience to your clients, both who are people of color or not, a really valuable experience that allows them to step up to the next level of their potential.